Okay, we are making smoked meatloaf today. So uh, this is gonna come out really, really great. We've done this a bunch of times here. Um, and it comes out really well, it's fantastic. Um, if you've seen my smoked cheeseburger video, it's kind of similar, right? It's ground beef that we're seasoning and throwing on the smoker. Um, so what we're gonna do is, um, we're gonna build our loaf. We'll go ahead and put it on the grill. We're gonna be looking for 275 to three, about 300, 275. And it'll take probably an hour and a half, two hours to get it up to 160 degrees internal temperature. Everybody, just like chili, everybody has their own meatloaf recipe. Um, I like to keep mine pretty simple. So we just have two pounds of beef, of ground beef. This is 90-10, do not use this. You should be using 80-20. Um, my wife is buying this because, you know, it's organic and the kids and healthy and blah, blah, blah. Get 80-20, it will taste better. The more fat, the better it's gonna taste. Um, you could also use ground chuck, you can use some ground pork, you can use pieces of chorizo. You could do anything you wanna do. I'll walk through the process, I'll walk through my recipe, and you can make whatever tweaks you want. So we're gonna be doing two pounds of ground beef. Then we're gonna be seasoning. I'm gonna do some honey hog because I have a little bit left, so I'm just gonna finish that off. It's nice and sweet. Then we have uh, meat church all purpose. I'm gonna do breadcrumbs because this will be closer to a traditional. Um, we have some Worcestershire sauce that I'll throw in here. And there's already a cracked egg inside. So let's get all of this in here. We'll mix it up nice and then we'll come back to form the bag. All right, we've mixed our meat up really well. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna form it into a loaf. I don't have a really nice meatloaf tray. I do just have a little tin foil tray. This is probably more meat than will fit, but we're just trying to get the general shape here so that we can put it onto the grill. So let's get our meat into there. Actually, it fits perfect. So we're just gonna get this formed nice and tight. So we'll get this formed. And what I did is I took this little tray, I wrapped saran wrap around it, so that um, right now we're gonna put it in the fridge so that it gets as cold as possible. I want it to form and, and you know keep its shape and hold its shape. So we're gonna put it in the fridge. The, the warmer it is, it's gonna start to fall apart. So I want it cold. This is the one time we're gonna like emphasize putting cold meat on the uh, smoker. So I'm gonna put this in the fridge to make it cold so it keeps its shape because we don't want it falling through the grill. Um, and we're ready to put it on the grill. We're gonna take this out and we are just gonna pull the meat out like this. And that's why we have our saran wrap and we'll go ahead and put it, uh, put it directly on the grill. So I'm gonna get this into the fridge now. We'll get our fire started. Um, I probably won't start that for another hour or so, but the magic of camera, it'll look like immediately. We'll get it in the fridge, we'll let it cool off and we'll go ahead and start our fire. Again, we're looking for 275 uh, to 300 range. And I'm probably gonna smoke this with um, some apple wood, some peach, uh, a sweeter type wood. Uh, I actually like sweet meatloaf. I don't want ketchup on top, but I do like sweet uh, glaze that we'll, we'll take care of that later. So let's get this in the fridge. We'll come back in a little bit. We'll start our fire and uh, we'll start the cooking process. So I'm getting ready to light my fire here for the um, smoked meatloaf. So we have a nice clean, empty grill. Uh, the last cook I did were those 900 degree steaks. So this thing's pretty spotless right now. And we opened up a bag of this Western premium barbecue, barbecue product charcoal. This is from Costco. Uh, I just wanna show you inside. There's some good sized chunks in here. So I have pretty enormous hands. I'm a pretty large guy. And look at the size of these chunks. So um, I know everybody has their charcoal preference, but I'm, I'm very surprised with this. This is a 30 pound bag. Uh, we got it at Costco for $15 and there's some pretty big chunks. So I'm actually gonna upload a separate video, just a very quick video. But if you see these uh, at your Costco, I recommend it. So I'm gonna get this loaded up, we'll light our fire and uh, we'll, we'll restart. All right, we've got the fire lit here. You see some of these massive chunks. Uh, this is a Kamado Joe Classic 2. So if you need some scale reference, um, you know, this piece here, that piece there, uh, these are some giant chunks. So again, it's a pretty solid bag of charcoal. So uh, the goal is 275 to 300, something like that. So uh, I'll add my wood in a few minutes. I like to wait till the charcoal catches before I throw the wood in here. The last thing I want is that wood to burn up completely so I don't really get you know, the smoke I need on the meat. Um, but I'm gonna close this lid. 
Um, again, 275, 300. We'll come back when it's there and we'll, we'll put our um, smoked meatloaf on here, nice and cold. All right, we are cruising along at 275. Let's go ahead and get this on here. You see I have the pan underneath? That's literally just for dripping. I told you the last thing I cooked on here were those 900 degree steaks. So this thing is uh, spotless clean and I just really don't feel like dirtying it up. So let's get our meatloaf on there. So I just pulled it right out of the, uh, the tray with the saran wrap and clunked it on. And now we're gonna use our meter probe to tell us when it's ready. So um, let's close this lid. This is gonna take about an hour and a half to two hours, something like that. Depends how steady the temperature is. But I'm gonna close this lid. We'll let this smoke, we'll let it drip into the pan. I don't have any water in the pan or anything like that. You can put it, but we don't necessarily need it. And I'm gonna go into the meter app now to say what I'm cooking and what temperature I want. And the meter app is gonna tell me, okay, take your meat off, the, the temperature's still rising, let it rest, or it's done resting. It's gonna tell me that whole thing. So we really don't have to open this again. We don't have to look at this again, uh, but we will actually come back when the meter probe gives me a 15 minute warning. Um, we're gonna come back and we'll put some nice glaze on here. And I'll talk to that when we get to that step. But uh, let's close this lid, let's get it go. Uh, if you want to buy a meter probe, I will have a link in the description to this and everything else we've used. So let's close this lid and we'll come back uh, at the, you know, one hour and 45 minute mark or whatever the meter probe tells me. Uh, there's about 15 minutes left. All right, so very quickly, I just checked the meter app just to see where we were. And it said there was an hour and something left, which is fine. Uh, but it also said the temperature was 293 degrees. And if you look at this thermometer here, or this temperature gauge, that is basically exactly what it's saying. So um, you can tell this is not the Kamado Joe one because the Kamado Joe one broke on me. Uh, I bought this on Amazon, it was like 20 bucks. Um, I'll link down below, but this is dead accurate. I did not calibrate this, meaning I did not put it in boiling water, but um, it looks good and you know, it matches the grill. It is dead accurate. And the probe on the inside that hangs down is much shorter than the Kamado Joe one. So if you're stacking food high or have your accessory rack, uh, it's not gonna jam into it. So I'll link in the description, but uh, I just wanted to show this off. I was actually surprised at how uh, in sync the meter probe is and this gauge. So this is uh, it's pretty accurate. So we still have another hour or so, but uh, we'll just keep chugging along. All right, let's make the sauce that we're gonna put on top. So you can use anything you want. You can do barbecue sauce, you can do ketchup, you can buy something pre-made. We're actually gonna make our own and it's just ketchup, honey mustard, and Worcestershire sauce. Um, I usually throw a little buffalo in there, a little hot sauce, but you know the kids are eating this too, so I'm not trying to get too crazy. So we're just gonna mix this up. It's not an exact science, but it comes out amazing every time. Again, you can put whatever you want on top, but we can go ahead and make this. I'm still waiting for the 15 minute uh, warning to put it on, but we'll go ahead and make this in here now. All right, perfect. So I'm gonna go put this in the fridge and we're still waiting for the warning, but once we get the warning, we'll go ahead and coat this on the, um, on the meatloaf until we uh, get the alert that it's 165 internal. All right, we got our 15 minute warning. Wow, that looks great. So let's go ahead and get this coated. We don't want it to be too thick, but we definitely want the whole thing covered. Oh, this looks amazing. And this is why we have the drip pan because this is a disgusting mess. And I don't want all this sugar in my grill burning up, getting sticky, being gross. So we're using a drip pan. There's probably easier, neater ways to do this, but this is the easiest and I'm all about easy. All right, let's close the lid and we'll wait for the probe to tell us that it's 165. 
What it'll probably do is tell us that it's 160, and then we'll take it off, and it'll go ahead and rise. But uh, I'll let the probe uh, dictate the timing for all of that. All right, the grill tent's been holding strong, and we got an alert that our ground beef is at 160. So we are good to go. Um, so I'm going to take this out. We'll let it rest. I originally set it for 165, but that's wrong. It's 160. I don't know why I did 165, but I was thinking. Um, but it only needs to be 160. So we're going to take this off. We're going to put it on the cutting board, and we're going to rest it under some uh, tin foil. So um, I'll move the camera here, and we'll take it off, and then we'll come back in about 10, 15 minutes, so we're going to cut it open. It's been resting about 10 minutes. So let's just go ahead and cut it open. I will tell you right now that this will not be as juicy as yours will be because I used 90-10 ground beef instead of 80-20. So obviously that extra fat adds some flavor, adds some juices. And I'm not worried about the flavor because we, you know, we did a lot of really, lot of, a lot of great things um, to give this some flavor. The juiciness, however, will be affected, but let's go ahead and cut this open. Oh, maybe I'm wrong. Oh, it's still very juicy. Look at that. So this came out amazing. So there's a ton of juice here, and uh, I use 90-10 ground beef. So I can't imagine how good this would be uh, if you're using proper 80-20, because um, your wives aren't giving you a hard time. Um, so this came out great. I can smell, uh, I can smell all the seasonings. I can smell that, um, that coating we put on top. Uh, so if you have any questions, let me know. You know, like, subscribe. Um, you know, feel free to comment down below. I do have links in the description for the meter probe um, and a few of the other things we use during this cook. So uh, again, if you could like, subscribe, I appreciate it. And uh, go ahead and let me know if you have any questions.